Today we're going to talk about the trading card game market. Well hello everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG and my daughter's non-threatening play environment for us to non-threateningly talk about the current state of the TCG market. We're gonna use props. We got Pokemon cards here for props. We're gonna talk about the, the TCG market because I just feel like we are kind of on a brink of a eh, eh. It's not looking like it's gonna be great over the next couple months. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of things going on in the world. There's a lot of conversations happening. Uh, there's a lot of money moving into crypto and out of crypto. There's a lot of uh, stock markets not doing super well. There's just a lot of conversations. I just wanted to have a conversation about the current TCG market and what I anticipate being the most important aspect of the TCG market over this next six months, year, two years, whatever, however long this goes. You know, we had a similar circumstance happen in the in 2020, but then we had you know the stimuluses and that kind of threw the TCG market. A tizzy. So we're on the back end of that, which is creating all this craziness where we have all these Kickstarter projects, we have all these alternative TCGs, we have card games like Flesh and Blood and MetaZoo who are uh, becoming less alternative and now more mainstream. We have all this stuff happening that has never happened before. And now all of a sudden we have another kind of interaction going on where uh, the world is just kind of there and it's just going to be interesting. So today in this video, I want to talk about what I believe to be the most important thing for you to be looking at in terms of trading card games and their sustainability uh, in this culture, in this climate where there are so many games and where so many games will fail. Now, I want to be very clear with you, very, very clear up front. I still plan on not changing my attitude at all. I will still be backing most of the TCG Kickstarters because I really believe in a lot of the games and that they're really cool. Um, I think that the, the TCG landscape has forever changed. I, I think that um, there's gonna be uh, some really cool games that come out. They are not going to compete with Pokemon and Magic the Gathering. They are not going to replace those things. You will not be playing these Kickstarter games over top of people playing their you know favorite TCGs. But I do believe that these card games can create some communities uh, where they can be successful. And if you are interested in them, I think that you should still back them. You should still support them if you like the game. If you're here for free tendies, I think that time's over. Um, but I just wanted to say that like up front, up front, I still plan on backing the games that I was planning on backing. I still plan on um, you know being involved in Flesh and Blood and MetaZoo. I still, be, if, like nothing for me is changing, but these are some things that I think you should consider and the big thing that I think you should consider as we move into this market. So let's go to my props here. We're gonna use props um, of my daughter's Pokemon cards, okay? These are all the uh, the extra Pokemon cards here. And I wanna talk about uh, fan bases and the importance of having authentic and real fan bases. Um, because at the end of this, this is what's going to happen. If you, if you think, let's get, we got, oh, she's got a little too many cards here. Let's just use these cards here that these cards represent the, the current environment of whatever TCG that you're interested in, right? These are everybody who buys, sells, and trades cards or plays with cards in the current TCG that you're interested. You've got some whales, some big, you know, some, some mudkip, you know, the big whales. And then you've got just like the other people who are interested in the card game. Well, what happens is when a market like this occurs and when the fear and when the, uh, the interactions of a current market climate like this happens, the people who are not true fans, well, they leave. Um, you know, the people who are not true fans, they go away. The, the people who are just in it for the tendies, who are just in it to make money, who don't actually care about the games. Maybe you have one or two whales there that, you know, they don't actually care about the games. They're just in it for the attendees. And that leaves less people. So the market kind of goes down. And then maybe what happens is uh, the market kind of picks up a couple of what they left down. Uh, and so you, you kind of have it picked up. But then the other thing that happens is people just get busy. And so, you know, you have um, you have some people leaving out the back door and, uh, you know, who are just kind of there and, you know, maybe they come back, maybe they don't. Uh, and then you have a new set come out or like a pre-release or like a new product for, for people and some more people come in. Uh, but then you just, you're left with, at the end of the day, you're left with, 
the true fans, the people who actually care, the people who are actually, and it looks smaller. That doesn't mean that the game has failed, doesn't mean that the game is in a bad state. It just means that the initial amount of people that were in it were not the real people. They were just in it for the short term. And like now you're left with the people who are here and this is still successful. Now, it doesn't look as flashy. This doesn't look like the cards aren't holding the same value as maybe they once were. Or, you know, the amount of players maybe is, is going down or not growing as rapidly as you thought it would but it leaves the same thing that this is still successful, just doesn't look like success that maybe you thought. Now here's the kicker. If, if this was everything, and at the end of the day, almost everybody was just in it for money or just in it because they weren't true fans or they didn't really like it, and that leaves you with just a few people who were true fans, the issue here is that this cannot support what was built for this. It's all about how much did the company print? How much, uh, how much did the company think this was what was true, was the real fans, the people who are really interested, the people who are really here. And this is where you're gonna get into some issues, I think, with some of the Kickstarters that are going on, where how many people hopped in that, that were really here because they really liked the game, because they really liked it. And if you are a company that is making a new game, you really have to look at this number and not the number over here, the bigger number. Um, so it's just definitely something to keep in mind. Um, I was baffled where I started thinking about this actually. Uh, I was baffled when I was thinking about this at uh, Collecticon and seeing just the amount of people who were there who loved uh, MetaZoo and then this past weekend at the ProQuest, just the amount of people who were uh, super interested in, in having actual full dialogues about Flesh and Blood. And it made me just think about all these games that are around and trying to emulate what we've seen happen over the last couple of years. Uh, and man, I think you just gotta be really careful. Um, I think games that grow too big too fast um, are extremely dangerous and uh, that you should be very cautious about some of those things going on. You should look at games. Um, you know, one of the reasons that I got really into uh, Legions is because I saw that they have like seven to 10 to 15 LGSs that are running their game. And I got in their Discord and people were passionate and talking about playing and they were talking about decks and they were talking about all the things. Um, and, and that to me is like, okay, the company isn't growing to this massive scale. They are catering to what they currently have and then taking the next step, not taking 15 steps. So as you're looking at these new TCGs, for me, that is what I look at. I really think uh, if, if your Pokemon and your um, Magic the Gathering are your blue chip, I guess you could throw Yu-Gi-Oh and all those games in there too. I don't talk about those, but if Pokemon and Magic the Gathering are blue chip things that are always gonna be here, you know, like the 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 Magic the Gathering, you're not gonna lose your, your player base. You're not gonna lose Lose your fan base uh, like you know when I shifted all those cards over you're not gonna lose that percentage so those are blue chip things that are gonna be around forever I really think MetaZoo and um, and flesh and blood are becoming I don't know whatever the next color chip is where it's it's getting closer to those blue chips uh, but those other games I when I look for other games I look for things that are sustainable growth that are sustainable that are sustaining and that are um, not trying to grow so rapidly so keep in mind that stuff on Kickstarter. I would really advise you as you're buying any, into any of this stuff. What I, you know, honestly, I think all the markets, even the even the blue chip markets, can can have some softness. Flesh and Blood, uh, MetaZoo, I think are going to see some softness over the next couple months. Um, I think that you really need to be asking the question: Where is the fans? Are, are do these games have the amount of support in the true fans, the people who are here, the people who doesn't matter what the you know what the companies do, doesn't matter what happens, they're still going to be here riding it out and having fun because they love the product and they love the games. Those are the things that you need to ask, not how many people bought it or what, what's the print run percentage to, because there's gotta be somebody on the back end of this because everything is going to drop. There's gotta be somebody on the back end of this that's like, no, I don't care that it dropped, I'm still here and now I can get a better deal. Um, and so that is what I kind of 
to look into as you're starting to see this, who are the true fans and what are the true fans, the people who are really passionate about these projects. And that is what's interesting to me in this new climate. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed our non confrontational atmosphere today and our Pokemon card project. I um, hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Let me know what you think in the comment section below uh, and let me know what games that you're most excited about. Are you going to be back in the new Kickstarter games? Are you going to be um, buying the cards as they kind of dip and as they kind of come to the market if we do have a downturn? Uh, what are you going to be doing? What cards are you going to be buying? And I'm very interested to hear that from you. I hope that you have yourself a fantastic day. Remember, be kind to the people around you and we'll see you again next video.